Our next guests are once again on a mission to reunite people with their missing loved ones. Ah! I know. So, prepare for some unbelievable moments. <laughs> Get the Kleenex out to return a long-lost family. Oh, oh and Davina McCall and Nikki Campbell join us now. I am so excited about this show. Long Lost Family starts on Monday night, 9 p.m. ITV. I'm already emotional. I mean, I can't. <laughs> What's in the trailer? I, I'm more emotional now, now that we're in lockdown. What can we expect from the first episode on, on Monday, Davina? So, the first episode, we look at um, two stories uh, and the first story is the story of Phyllis and Kevin. They're looking for their son. They are still together. Um, their story is tinged with real tragedy within their own family unit. So after they lost their son that they're searching for, they had a terrible tragedy in their family, which made it even more important and more pertinent for them to find um, their son, Sean. And what's amazing about this series is that a lot of it was recorded pre um, any kind of um, COVID or any lockdowns or masks or anything like that. So, you know, Nicky's travelling. He travelled in the first story, didn't you, Nicky? Uh, yeah, I've been to Australia. I think. I'm having that. I'm Spain in this particular episode. People walking around, having coffee in a village, touching each other, hugging each other. Extraordinary. We watched it last night, actually. The whole family watched episode one last night. My four daughters and me and Tina. And we had literally to have a group hug oh. after it was over. Because, yeah. I mean, family... Family means everything, but I think now, don't you think, Davina, it means more than ever to people. What? I mean, it's, ten, it's ten series now, guys. So what, what do you think the, the big secret of this show is? I mean, I love it. I have to be in the right mood to watch it. There are times when it's been on and I've, I, and I've tried to get to the remote to turn over before I get, like, caught into it. And then before I know it, I'm half a bottle of wine in and, and I'm, I'm crying it's into my so chicken. Real you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, you, but it, there is something special about this show. What do you think it is? Well, I think firstly, it's about connection. And um, I, I mean, even before before the coronavirus, I think connecting with people has always been so important and being able to, um, I don't know, reach people on, on any level. I mean, I can watch any story and I will find something in it that I can relate to, a feeling, a sense of wanting to belong somewhere, a sense of missing something, a sense of loss, grief, um, and then finding someone or, you know, if you've lost someone and you're watching someone else who thought they'd lost someone for their whole lives and then they find them, there's something so beautiful about that. Mm. So every story has meaning. But now, and Alison, I think you're right now, more than ever, this program has extra depth. And it's like Nikki said, you know, you watch it and at the end of it, you want to you want to go and hug the people that you love the most. And yet a lot of us can't. So. It's a, it's a powerful show, but it's a show of hope and it is a show of where we can get back to in the future and, I'm, you know, where we will get back to in the future. Um, uh, uh, yeah, a different time. It's just a show of love, isn't it? Um, you've both kind of carved out your way. So, yeah, Nikki, you are always going off abroad and then, Davina, you're normally at home. Would you yeah. both like to maybe change roles? Nikki, would you like up. to rather be at home more often or do you like what you're doing? I kind of like finding things out, uh, you know, finding what the whole story is. And I think what Davina is, you know, when Davina appears in your life and gives you, she's the bringer of glad tidings. That's the whole thing, Davina. But you're right, it's about, it's about connection. And funnily enough, the heart of the human condition, literally the heart. And funnily enough, some of the stories in this series were done during the pandemic. And there's something, we were just saying this the other day, Davina and I, there's something even more in some ways powerful when people meet and they're not able to touch each other. It's, oh, it's kind of awful. Yeah. Um, well, Zavini, you said something and I was reading my research notes yesterday, it really struck with me. Because it's, it's interesting, people, you know, for the most part, these stories are people of a certain age who, given the time, were for one reason or another, whether they were forced or they had to make a decision about something in their lives. And you said it's not just about connections and reunions, it's about history and the moral compass of the world at the time. Mm. So I think sometimes we can look at it in our kind of 2021 uh, kind of myopic way and go, well, how, how could these people have behaved like this? But, you know, there's, so, there's always, always mitigating circumstances in the, in the conditions and situations that people have been put in, right? 
Well, that, I think that's why, uh, in, a, in a, another way of answering the question about how have we kept going for 10 years, that every single story is different because family is complicated. But not only that, we're looking at different times in history, different laws, different social cultures. We're looking at countries abroad about... Um, about how culture works in other countries at that time as well. So it's social history, it's familial history, it's what's accepted um, in the 60s and 70s is, you know, seen as completely normal now. What was seen as kind of shocking back then would would be something that we would think, well, why on earth would a, would a family have their child taken away from them when they can solely cl clearly look after them? That's series one. I mean, episode one with Phyllis and Kevin, you know, they went to court to go and get their son back. They could have had their son back, but the judge said, he's settled now in his foster home. You should let him go. Bless. And they could have been in one of those mother and baby homes as well. Sorry to come in, but they're very much in the news at the moment, Dermot and Alice. And it's a lot of the cruelty in those Irish mother and baby homes. But of course, they got out of there and they took their their little baby to London, and then they met their little baby again, Reuben, who's just one of the nicest people I, I've met over the last 10 years of my last family. Nice. Amazing guy. Nikki, do you ever get emotional? Do you ever cry? Dina will tell you the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, he's a crier. Is he an ugly crier? Is that why they keep cutting it out? <laughs> Is he an ugly? That's a terrible <laughs> question to ask. Is he an ugly crier? <laughs> Um, um, you, you said, oh, you know, you were slightly fan fangirling over um, Nicky earlier on about his radio. Fun. You know, like when I met Nicky, I was like, oh, he's so clever and he's so smart and erudite. And like, I'm going to meet him. I'm going to seem really silly and <laughs> sort of shallow. And I met him and I was like, oh, this is amazing. There's another side to Nicky Campbell. Aww. And it's an incredibly emotional and um, warm and... Uh, vulnerable, dare I say, Nikki? I'm sorry, I'm not going to be doing your image any good at all, but um, that I really like, and that is the side that you bring to this show. Oh, we were so excited. Monday, ITV, 9pm. Can you send me a take of this programme afterwards, please? Um... <laughs> I'll just show you that bit of Davina <laughs> talking about you. <laughs> On a loop. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, guys. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Davina. I love you guys. I can't wait for that.